Hey world, welcome. It is Anywhere The Needle Drops. I'm your host, Justin Flagel. As always, how are you doing? I'm doing well. We're here to talk about some great music, some great uh, regional music. We're talking to actually one of my favorite musicians of all time, and he just happens to be one of my fellow Michiganders. He is a, a homegrown Michigan guy. Uh, it's Jake Simmons. You might know him from Jake Simmons or Jake Simmons and the Little Ghosts. You know, I've done things with Jake over the years. He's been on some of our video projects and a few other things, but this is the first time I've actually had him sit down on this show. So it was fun to actually dig a little bit into the background of his music. You know, there were always some lyrics I kind of wondered about and just the general origins, all that sort of a thing. So it was it was a great time getting to uh, to sit and chat with Jake. You know, he hasn't put out uh, a ton of music with the band recently, um, as we discovered during the show. His last full band album was uh, back in 2018, but uh, uh, Shake So Easy, that still still remains one of my all-time favorite albums. It's just so good. You know, you just toss it on and, and crank up the volume and, you know, drive down the road and all is well in the world. So you should definitely check that out. And then uh, just under his solo work, he does have a couple of um, other things going on. There was an EP last year as well with a few songs that he put together. So there's music out there and um, we got him on the record. He did say there will be more music this year. So we're going to hold him accountable. We're looking forward to that new music. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to give you a little taste of some of his other stuff. So check out this tune. Check out uh, Jake Simmons um, on the socials, on the website. All that is in the show notes. And check out the interview. Take care. Here's to life.
again I love you harder than I can defend But I know that it ain't now like it was back then It's them and them and us again Them and them and us again Okay, it should be recording now. Good deal. All right. So, uh, well, hey, uh, Jake Simmons is in the house. <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, welcome, welcome to the show. Thanks for doing this. Um, I realized I was thinking for the longest time that I had actually had you on the show in its previous iteration, but I've never actually had you on here in all these years, have I? Oh, I don't know. I, I mean, we've done stuff. I'm not sure if it was the show specifically. Yeah, I know you did, uh, what, we did, uh, I think, one of the 12 Days Holidays videos, maybe. I know that was a thing. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I think as far as this actual show goes, I, I may have been at the point where I was kind of winding it down in its original run. Uh, okay. When we first kind of encountered each other, so... Yeah. So, uh, Jake Simmons, Jake Simmons and the little ghost out of Kalamazoo. So, um, what is happening in your musical world lately? Oh boy. Uh, well, we've been working on writing and recording in the last, you know, handful of months. We kind of got the band rolling again last year yeah. in kind of a new incarnation. And we've been kind of getting our footing that way. And once we felt like we got there, we played a couple of shows. We were like, all right, it's time to do some writing and recording because it's been way too long yeah, since yeah. the band has put anything out. So that's what we've been working on. We're taking a break from that this week to play a show. Okay. In Kalamazoo, and then we're going right back into it. Oh, nice. Where are you, uh, where are you playing in k uh, Ruggers Up and Under, it's called. All right. If you ever went to the Strut, it's like right down the street from the Strut. Okay. Awesome. Or uh, what is it? It's been Rupert's since then. Uh, the Strut was, you know, a decade ago. But. Okay. I've my my heyday in Kalamazoo was quite a while ago, so you know, mm -hmm. not uh, not as hip with the kids and these fancy Me places. Either. <laughs> I'm here and I'm just I look outside my house. There's a there's a house across the street from me in a house I used to live in that has shows now and. Uh, I just watch the kids from afar do their thing and know that <laughs> <laughs> the music scene seems healthy. That's good. That's all we want. That's all we want. There's a thing right. uh, down here uh, in the South Bend area where there's a bunch of um, uh, teenagers now booking their own shows like DIY punk shows. And oh, yeah. they're talking about places like, I don't know if you um, ever knew the well uh, down here, but it was kind of the DIY punk scene for a previous generation. And now, right. you know, the people that were a part of that scene are now running the joint. And now they have these kids coming in talking about the, of this, as this place of legend, which, you know, on the one hand is kind of an honor, but also it's like, well, we're not that old guys, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. I had a, I had a, a buddy of mine who's a little older than me, who's been playing in uh, punk bands around here for, I mean, longer than I've even, you know, been playing music. Uh, he messaged me a couple months ago and referred to me as a, what was it, as a fellow lifer in the Kalamazoo rock and roll scene. I was like, oh, my heart. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it, was, it, it was a very uh, high honor coming from him. But I was like, oh, OK, that's where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's that's pretty cool, though. I mean, how long yeah. have you been uh, out there playing music? In Kalamazoo specifically, it's got to be like 15 years now right. um, as far as living here and playing music. Because the band, God, longer than that. Because Lil Ghost started in 2010, and I had been here for a couple years before that in my previous band. Before that, we travel up from South Haven to play shows up here like Kraft Brown stuff before we were old enough to drink and really appreciate it for what it was. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. um, so let's see. So, uh, I guess I didn't realize you weren't from orig originally from Kalamazoo. 
Yeah, I'm from South Haven. And well, I'm from South Haven slash Coloma slash Benton Harbor. Okay. All right. So uh you similar to my stomping grounds. I came up in Bridgman, so yeah, you know. Yeah. We all we all went to the same places. We all went to that cheap uh, Coloma theater, and uh, yeah, you yeah. Know. <laughs> My family mostly lives in Hager Shore and Coloma now, so uh, we st- we'll stop out there every now and again. And I was just talking to Lauren, my wife, the other day, and uh, trying to convince her to go to Coloma to do something, visit family, but also I just wanted to stop at the theater. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Is it still there? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yep. Nice. Coloma. The Loma and Coloma, yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, and it's uh, just that and the uh, the same people own the theater in South Haven. And I yeah. believe there's one more. I believe it's the one in Plainwell. Well, it could be a different one. But it's there. It's a chain of the cheapest movie theaters anywhere ever. Well, I believe it's actually the they're tied to the one here in Niles. Also, the oh, one really? Here. OK, yeah, because it used to be um, the Ready Theater. And mm. there, or you'd go on the website to look at the movie reviews, and it was the same. Th- it was those three theaters all on there. Like, well, which one are you yeah. going to? Niles. Or, yeah, it, it's like a. It's like an old grocery store here. The the Wonderland is now, and it's the cheapest movies around. So yeah, my mom used to. She'd go because she still lives in South Haven. She'd go to the movie theater just to get like the popcorn, <laughs> save your bucket, and like just go get some popcorn and take it home and watch a movie. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing, but apparently people do that because uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they did that. I think it was restaurant week one one year, a couple of years ago. The theater was like, well, you can still come get popcorn. You don't you know, that's your, that's our restaurant contribution. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So um, oh, yeah. so you were uh, so you were playing music. Uh, what pretty much from the start? When did you uh, when did you start getting in there and, uh, and you know, playing around with it? As far as just in general or yeah, with Talmud? Yeah. No, just in, just in general, you know, were you playing it around as a kid or? Yeah, I was trying to think about kind of the timeline of that earlier today. And I had to be, I think, 14 or 15 is when I really started playing guitar seriously. And before that, uh, you know, my parents had got me some drums. I got a bait. First, I got drums and I was probably 12 or 13. I was just atrocious. And my grandma has a church down in uh, Hager Shore, and they were nice enough to let me bang around over the top of them, singing these nice church songs for a little while. Nice. And I was, man, I was awful. And then I got a bass, and finally, like, my brother had a guitar, my mom had a guitar, my dad had a guitar, and I started kind of poking around with those, and that's what stuck. So I was probably maybe 13 or 14 when I really started doing it. So it runs in the family then? Yeah, everybody played as far as like, you know, my mom had a guitar, my dad had a guitar. My dad kind of showed me a a variation of Smoke on the Water one night yeah. with his guitar. And it was like, oh, hell yeah, I can do that. <laughs> nice, nice. So were they um, outperforming themselves or were they just hobbyists or what was their background with music? No, I don't think they performed much. They just each had a guitar and um, could do a couple things here and there. Nice, nice. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. A more of a hobby. I, because I was already playing drums, my first inclination was to just hit the guitars with a drumstick. Just cause it sounded good, you know, made yeah. a nice crack. <laughs> and I'm surprised they let me do that to their nice guitars. <laughs> uh, there's probably worse things you could be doing, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely. <laughs> something I'm finding with these interviews, you know, um, so many, so many people get started uh, with music as a kid and, you know, they're making a lot of times, especially at the start, all this terrible noise, but the parents are like, well, it's that or they'd be out on the streets somewhere. So I'd rather have them doing this, you know? Right. And out in Hager Shore too. I mean, I'm, j- I'm 35. I'm going to be 36 in like a week. So I'm like just at that age where we, would disappear for hours go ride our bikes around the neighborhood and you know do shit we weren't supposed to yeah and then come back <laughs> home and you know chill out <laughs> <laughs> yep yep I'm, I'm thankful i had that experience yeah. it seems awful to be a kid today Oh man, yeah, yeah. Especially, you know, uh, there's this whole Midwestern thing where you, you you've got to get out there and uh, you know really kind of go cause some trouble and just go exploring. And I don't know if you get to do that as yeah. much more as a kid. So. I mean, you can, but you're gonna get caught. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's gonna be a everywhere. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, the stuff that we used to do when we were kids, there was no one there to see it or catch it, you know. Or right. As long as you could right. catch or no one knew who you were. So <laughs> Right. No, we, it, for me, it was more just, uh, we, we just hurt ourselves out on our bikes, trying stupid shit. We got it. We had a couple like big hills in the neighborhood and we're like, yeah, I should take my, I should plow down this hill on my bike into the road. Definitely. Seems like a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, our thing was always the, um, you know, we were, we were, uh, uh, pro wrestlers having, um, you know, death matches in the basement or whatever, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the fact that none of us ended up in the ER is, uh, near a miracle. So, oh yeah. We used to do it out in the yard where we'd get the, the day we realized we could get like the aluminum foil, like cake pans and back <laughs> each other over the head with them and couldn't really feel it. That was, that was a game changer. Yep. Yep. Those, those were the days. <laughs> so, um, you know, your parents were playing music. What kind of stuff were they, uh, were they actually listening to? And therefore you were listening to in the house growing up. What was that influence like? Oh, f like straight up nineties pop country. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Yeah, what I was that. <laughs> My dad listened to some older country stuff as well, but all I can really remember from being young as far as like their influences, that nineties pop country thing, which I love now. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, I loved it then it's, you know, that's, that's what, you know, so you love it kind of thing. Um, and then I, it's like a formative memory. I remember my mom, uh, we were driving somewhere and she like changed the station to a pop station and there was a backstreet boys song playing. And I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Like I hadn't heard music that wasn't like radio country at yeah. that point. Yeah. So that was uh strangely illuminating for me. <laughs> Did you go down that rabbit hole at all? Or uh, were you like oh. kind of, yeah. I think the first uh, CD I bought that wasn't a country CD was oh geez. It was that first Matchbox 20 album. Okay. All right. That's a that's yeah. a classic. Oh, dude, I loved it. <laughs> I feel no shame. Yeah. Um, I I loved that. And then it was just, you know, like that, like, buzz ballads, kind of like alt rock shit started to grow on me. And then, you know, I had the Limp biscuit and Corn phase that a lot of other people had. <laughs> yep, we, we were all there, so... Yeah. You yeah. know, and some of those some of those corn songs are still kind of bangers, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like uh, there are some bands that aged d did pretty well. Yeah, come out of their system of a down. Like still to this day, I will I will play Toxicity and feel no shame. I love that record. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There there are definitely some. Um, I don't know if you can really see it behind me here, but I've got my my CD collection still from back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of all around this room and there are definitely some things that i pick out from from those days that uh they don't quite hold up but i think <laughs> the majority of them do you know the majority of yeah. them no, it's still this is still a little jam i like this so right right yeah. every now and again the stray like limp biscuit song will pop up on social media and i'll hear lyrics i hadn't heard in you know 20 something years i'm like oh oh no <laughs> I was listening to that as a child. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, a lot of it's really good. Yeah, I really love Power Man Five Thousand. Oh, I forgot about them. Wow, yeah. that song. Yeah. They had a uh, yeah. Worlds Collide. That's right. Yeah. Yep. yep. All right. <laughs> <I remember. laughs> no, but I, I got into that stuff, and then I ended up uh, my cousin, a couple of years older than me. Uh, I want to say he started going to South Haven schools before we did. And there was like a pretty decent like ska and punk scene for a minute there. Yeah. And uh, he got into that stuff and kind of introduced me to it. And then, you know, off to the races. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, as far as the sound of, of you know, you and the little ghost, I, I remember uh, I was heading up to Kazu to see you play at one point and I was hanging out at the at the bar here in town and the bartender was like, oh, you know, who are you going to go see? Like Jake Simmons and the Little Ghost. What kind of music do they play? And I was thinking about it for for a minute. And I was like, you know, it's just kind of good old fashioned rock and roll. Um, is that kind of how you feel about yourself as a sound or? 
I've had a very hard time over the years describing our music. And really, when you think about it, it shouldn't be too difficult at all because it's just rock and roll music. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like that's such a broad thing to say. Like you could say it to one person and they think ACDC, another they think John Mayer. Yeah. Another person's going to think Slipknot or uh, Five Finger Death Punch or something like that. And I don't feel like we're any of those things. Yeah. 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 I don't think I think we're a... very uh, like heavily punk and alt country influenced rock and roll. Okay. Yeah. I could definitely see that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, uh, so alt country, um, you got any favorites in that world right now? Old 97s have always been a favorite. Oh, um, yeah. so good. So good. I really loved Justin Towns Earl. And I actually, li I listened to Justin Towns Earl before I listened to Steve Earl. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. But, uh, Steve Earl's a big one too. I feel like Jason Isbell kind of falls into that as well. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're hitting on my sweet spots right now. There's yeah. something about, I think it came from my upbringing, but something about that, um, you know, alt country, uh, you know, or even like folk rock kind of genre that really right. for me does it, you know, I'm a big fan of Zach Bryan right now. And, um, mm -hmm. I just know, started listening to Zach Bryan. My brother sent me some of his stuff and I was like, this is great. I know, I know. And the dude is so prolific. I feel like he's putting out a new set of songs, uh, on streaming, I don't know, every six months or so, he just drops an entire new album and they're all good. There's not a single bad song amongst them. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Do you know, did you, uh, he had to have sold his soul to some kind of dark power or something, you know? Right. Just it's like a uh, Ryan Adams. You don't have to feel bad about listening to. Yeah. <laughs> He's just constantly putting things out. <laughs> I, I saw something the other day about how Ryan Adams just put out like five albums in a week. It's like, Jesus Christ. Insane. Yeah. Okay. So what's your excuse? It's been a few years since your last album. I, I don't have one. <laughs> I don't have one. I'm actually, part of it's just been, you know, trying to retool and rework the band. Um, and then kind of in the middle of that, the pandemic happening was, that was a big shot. Uh, but we're, we're getting back at it now. I've got the songs sitting around. It's just, you know, working them out and recording them. And I've been finally teaching myself a lot more about recording and mixing and production, that kind of stuff. So that's, I think once we get a good handle on the songs, we're going to be able to kind of churn them out a lot easier than we had before. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So is um, kind of knowing how to do it these days, it feels I, like it's hard to, as far as like, I, I appreciate an album, but it's like, it's, it feels like it's hard to find an audience releasing full albums. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, it's all streaming and playlists and that sort of a thing. Right. So, you know, I definitely get that. I, 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 for one, though, as a listener, I love an album. I mean, I look forward mm -hmm. to that. And even as, you know, uh, now it's the thing, I guess the, the modern version of the single is when you pre-save the album, you know, it auto downloads, whatever the first track is. And typically for me, I avoid that in my playlist until the whole album's out. I don't want to hear just that one track. I want to hear yeah. the, whole, the whole thing, but I think, I don't know. That might just be me nowadays. So I, you know, I'm kind of with you. It's it, but it's one of those things now where I feel like bands are, they'll start uh, releasing singles like months, months in advance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, I don't know if I can wait four or five months to, you know, like I don't have the self-control. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I, I know there are some artists where it seems like they've basically released the whole album as singles and then like, oh, mm -hmm. the album's officially out today. So, you know, it's like, well, I got all the songs already. So Right, right. That's what I ended up doing with my solo EP. Like I released and I, you know, I took several years to release the individual songs. I was just kind of like waiting for the right moment. But then it's like the right moment is not coming. Uh, here's the four songs I already released <laughs> with, with some cover art. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Well, as long as the music keeps coming, you know? Yeah. Um, so you were saying it sounded like, were there maybe some personnel changes just before COVID that you were uh, reacting to with the band? Well, uh, just before COVID we brought in um, Katie and Reggie from the other band I'm in to play guitar and keyboard as well as myself and matt were playing guitar at the time and then uh 
So it's like adding two parts into every song. It's just like finding space for everything, you know? Yeah, sure. And then uh, the pandemic happened and we lost our drummer. So we had to start the new drummer search. And that's just always a, that's always a big hassle. Yeah. I feel like for every band. Uh, and we, you know, tried some different stuff that didn't work out. We ended up, um, my friend Jeff that I'd been playing music with since we were in high school, uh, he uh, ended up being available. So now he's playing the drums. Nice. But that that just came together at the end of 2022. So last year we just played some shows here and there and kind of worked on stuff and felt it out. And now we're pretty ready to hit the ground running. So nice, nice. We don't do anything fast. Is the gist of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, you know, as long as the quality keeps coming, I mean, your your last album, uh, not just a favorite of whoa, what was that twenty? When did when did that come out? Twenty twenty twenty. The last full album or the EP? Full, the EP? The last full album. Yeah, the last uh, full little okay. ghost album. Oh, man, that was 2018. So. Was it really? Has it been that long? Yes. Holy shit. Wow. I know. And, we, and it was supposed to be 2017. It just got held up and held up and held up. So it's like, I, you know, uh, I've those songs have been kicking around for a while, I'll say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so, uh, I, I can't, that's blowing my mind that that was that long ago because uh, I know. <laughs> 20, well 2020 was last year yeah so <laughs> very much so very much so yeah yeah uh well regardless of how long it's been out uh it one of my favorite albums of all time to this day Thank i mean I pop that on and there's not a track that i skip on and i just you know I'll put it on full blast in my van and just tear down the road so oh yeah that's good to hear man because we we had a lot of trouble finding the track list for that because originally i was like we're gonna do a fucking double album <laughs> and, uh, you know that's a good idea for uh, uh, anybody but specifically a, a band that's gonna have tops a couple hundred people here <laughs> so like you know luckily uh we kind of steered away from that but originally it was going to be like a power pop kind of disc and then the other was going to be kind of like a heavy alt country oh, okay. thing which is cool i would have loved it but i you know <laughs> I don't know how much everybody else would have loved it. So, <laughs> are there any of those tracks that didn't make the cut that might find their way into the new release someday? For sure. Awesome. For sure. Yeah. All right. It's just, uh, you know, all of it's been just reworking it with now. I mean, at the point that uh, our other guitarist, Matt, actually had a kid in the last couple of years. So he ended up having to step back for a little while. So now the only original members are just me and Ben, the bassist. So there's a lot of it that we just got to, you know, rework and kind of get it to the point where it kind of feels like it represents where we are now, as opposed to, you know, 2011. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, are you going to see, do you see yourself playing out beyond sort of that Kalamazoo region anytime soon or after an album is released, anything like that? Yeah. Uh, saying, I think, when are you coming back to my town? That's what I'm saying. So <laughs> I think this year, I think All this right. year we'll get out and get some more uh, shows outside of Kalamazoo. Um, I don't know when, <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's January. I haven't booked anything, so it'll probably be summer before we're really at it unless somebody wants to throw us some shows we'd be happy to hop on somebody else's show sure yeah yeah um i remember because i i met you at uh i think it was the rutabaga show right you came down to south bend and opened for the rutabaga at uh mccormick's if i remember yep. correctly so how did you yep. get in touch with those guys oh well um Garth did sound for us at oh man, there's there's kind of several connections, but um Dina Woods was booking us around the South Bend area for a while and oh, yeah, okay. she's great. Um and then we kind of knew Garth from a roller derby like benefit show we played that another one of our friends from Kalamazoo asked us to be on. Brad Radke, he was playing it and he I believe asked us to play as well. And then Garth was doing sound for it and we met him 
Um, and then I feel like the rutabaga just has a lot of ties in Kalamazoo. Yeah. So I th- I think it's just some, you know, mixture of all that. Yeah. Well, there, I know there's a, um, a handful of the PRF crew that are in the Kalamazoo area. And then, you mm-hmm. know, now, now Garth is actually based in Kalamazoo. So, you know, I know there's a bunch of connection that way. So, right. Yeah. That's we we've got to get you up to Thunder Snow. Um, that's uh, I always see about it, and I'm like, that looks cool. <laughs> it is so much fun, and you know what? Uh, they're they're uh, it's coming back this year for the first time since COVID. Last time they did it was oh, 2020. Yeah. So I think it's uh, a month away from today that it happens. Uh, okay. um, but it's a it's so much fun. It's so <laughs> much fun. It's um, you know a bunch of um, music nerds hole up in a uh, a hotel. Uh, in the Upper Peninsula in the winter, which, as you know, is, you know, kind of a crazy thing to do. And right, right. I was going to say, I think it's in the UP or something, right? Yep, yep. yep. One second. My cat's going to eat a bottle cap if I don't oh, stop him. Yeah, no worries. Come on, man. We got kittens this summer. Yeah. And uh, we've been waiting for the day that they're big enough to jump on the kitchen counters and we have to start worrying about that. And literally that was the first time I've seen it happen. <laughs> so now I got to start worrying about that shit. <laughs> I, uh, they had these little, um, we bought this, uh, for our new kittens. Um, it's like a, a motion sensor automatic sprayer thing. Uh, oh. so yeah, you just kind of aim it to where they hop on the counter and then it automatically sprays them. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's called like, cat or something like that so huh. you might check that out the only problem is um it uh goes off as equally for humans as it does yeah. for <laughs> and uh i would always forget it was turned on so i'd walk into the kitchen and sh- it'd spray me and then yeah. I'd, you know emptying the bottle out before the cats even had a chance to you know. oh man yeah so worth it i think <laughs> wake you up a little bit yeah yeah but no, the uh, the thunder snow thing. It's a uh, it's a good time. Just a bunch of music nerds hole up in a in an inn in the Upper Peninsula in the middle of winter, and play a bunch of music. And you know, you you're staying in the hotel room or the hotel down the hall. So you literally you never have to go outside. You walk down the hall. There's a restaurant and a bar inside the hotel. The venue, uh, for as much of a venue that it is, is inside the the hotel. So and you just spend the whole week in there. It's nothing but music and camaraderie. It's a it's a real good time. So that sounds awesome. Yeah. Yep. I've got some friends in the UP too that have been trying to get us up there for the longest time and it just never ends up coming together. But yeah. yeah. Well, it's I think this year when we get around to uh, booking and stuff, I think we're going to really try to focus on just the Midwest and not try to do too much, you know, further than that for a while. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, and there's plenty of, you know, uh, great venues. I mean, I feel like there's a pretty good music scene kind of uh, different spots, you know, all around. So, I mean, you're obviously in a very rich area, you know, that whole Kalamazoo, Grand Rapids region. Um, and speaking of UP, there's, you know, kind of oddly a nice Marquette uh, music scene. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I guess there's not much else to do besides sit around and noodle on guitars, right? So I've heard that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then all the way going down to like Indianapolis and whatnot. So um yeah, the area is ripe with uh with talent. It's pretty amazing. So Right, right. Yeah. I love Indianapolis too. We've only played there a handful of times, but uh it's always it's always fun. Yeah, yeah. So um so so you're working on this new not work you're you're uh, kind of orienting this new lineup and uh figuring out the sound and all that. Uh, so with this team, um, are you strictly handling the songwriting or is that something you share in some way? Um, how does that dynamic work within the group? So far, everything's been, you know, songs I've had sitting around for a while. Um, I wrote a lot of songs in 2020. Um, so we're still kind of working on that and some of the ones prior, (laughs) Sure. but, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a thing where I've got like a, a skeleton of a song and then I try to convey what I want it to sound like and let everybody kind of write their parts around that. So for the yeah. most part, it's, yeah, trying to be less of a dictator than I've been in the past. 
Sure, sure. <laughs> I don't know. You 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 have your name in the band, so I mean. I know. I know. It's a it's a delicate line to walk. <laughs> you know. Some... I also play drums in another band now, so I have a much better um, understanding of what it's like to uh, just be another person in the band that's not writing the songs, and you just get to think about your part, and you don't have to worry about all the other stuff, and it's really nice. Um. But now it's I I think I'm not I'm I hope I've never been too bad about it. But where I've landed now is like you know if you're gonna tell somebody to play something specific, you should probably be able to do it yourself. <laughs> you know there have been times in the past with my current drummer when we were kids where I'd want him to play something on the drums, but I couldn't even explain to him what it was. Sure, you know? yeah, so it's like that's kind of tough to work around. <laughs> I mean, I think that's pretty good uh, advice for anything in life. You know, I mean, you right. can't be uh, demanding of people to do something that you can't or won't do yourself. So, you know, but, right. yeah. So uh, what's this other band that you're uh, that you're in? Uh, I play drums in Katie Needs a Life. OK. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Kind of like a synth pop kind of punk power pop thing. Very nice. So and Katie that uh, plays keys in my band, it is her band and her songs. And yeah, it's good stuff, I think. Nice. All right. Is that, uh, does that, um, is there like a different kind of creative inspiration in that when you're not doing the songwriting, you're just sort of flexing those instrument muscles? For me, I've never felt like a particularly good drummer. So it's like, I'm just hanging on for dear life, trying not. <laughs> ruin the song i think sure. i'm better now than i was i think i've been in the band like god since like 2016 maybe so it's actually been quite a while for me to not have progressed very much <laughs> <as a drummer>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's just it's just trying to keep up with those guys really for me sure sure do they uh get outside of kalamazoo at all or is that pretty much just like a regional band or yeah we've we've done some touring together in the past uh the last uh, bigger tour I did bigger, but it was like two weeks, um, was we, w I went out East, um, on a solo tour, but also, uh, Katie needs a life came with me. So it was like both of us. Um, and we've done some little jaunts like that here and there, but mostly in the last handful of years, it's just been one off shows around the state. Nice. So how does yeah. that work, you know, at, at your level? How are you booking shows, you know, out east or whatever? How, how does that work for, you know, kind of a band at, at the level that you're at? How it did work was just, you know, I started, I think our first tour, our first two-week tour we did was, what was it? It was like down to Tennessee then up and over to New York and back. So kind of down South and out East. And it, at that point, 2010, I mean, you could still work some things out over my space, but not a lot of that. Um, there are websites, you know, like do DIY.org is a good resource. You know, it's just a, basically a big list of people that are booking DIY shows and different, cities and states and you know you reach out there you you meet people that are coming to your town and friends of friends and it's very much a community-based thing nice but as of you know how to do it in the last handful of years i'll i'll find out i guess <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the people you know we would have been booking with 13 years ago aren't doing it anymore sure you know? yeah yeah, I mean, um, I don't know about uh, up there, you know, but there's definitely been some, you know, venues have gone, venues have changed hands. I mean, what have you seen up there as far as all that? In Kalamazoo, we've always had like a ton. There have always been like a, a small handful of nice venues and bars doing shows. And a couple of them have either stopped doing shows or stopped doing the kind of shows that we play or have closed down, unfortunately. But there has never not been at least like three or four houses putting out shows and i feel like right now it's it's the most there's been since like 2012. And i remember hearing at one point back then that we were like we had like the most house venues in a square mile of anywhere in the country 
Oh, nice. All right. Yeah. And I don't know how true that is, but I heard it. But there's a shitload now, too. I feel like every other day I, I hear about a new house venue in the neighborhood, which I just, you know, that's great. Yeah. So, I mean, that they whole... want any, uh, you know, old dads to come play their shows. Sure. <laughs> they can hit us up. <laughs> um, the uh, that that whole scene up there, kind of that. Um, uh, yeah. I'm not even sure what what you call that region. What do you call that region up there? The Kalamazoo, Grand Rapids, you know, kind of area. I, West Michigan. <laughs> um, Southwest Michigan, I think. Yeah, yeah. See, but I, we take uh, umbrage with that because we're really, truly the Southwest Michigan. <laughs> we're the forgotten little corner down here. So we hear that. And we're like, no, nah, uh-uh, buddy. <laughs> I think if you, I think if you, you know, uh, drew the the big T through the middle of Michigan. Yeah. You yeah. know, Southwest, we're that we're in that block. But we're not, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what what is it? We're the uh, the oh Jesus, chaotic bad. I don't know. Whatever it is. <laughs> Was that a D and D reference? <laughs> oh no, there's the thing. It's like lawful good, chaotic good, neutral. Yeah, that's Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, then, yeah. <laughs> or whatever this bad shit is down here okay all right uh <laughs> all right. well yeah that's good to know but you guys do you have a pretty amazing uh uh music scene up there and not just you know like you were talking about venues but there seems to be at least from my my perspective, perspective from afar there seems to be a lot of um you know bands that exist and then bands that are sort of working together collaborating to kind of uplift each other you know a lot of crossover with memberships you know i'm in this band you're in that band kind of a thing i mean is that is that the case do i have that uh yeah there's there's always been like a good handful of folks trying to work together to just you know keep the scene positive and keep it going and everything and for a while it was a uh dit kalamazoo i'm not sure how much they're operating anymore but like there's yeah there's always been a a good amount of people trying to keep it together Great. and a lot of folks i mean a lot i want to say most people in bands around here if they're in one band they're in four bands yeah you know so it's just everybody knows everybody yep yep I feel like that's a, a sign of a scene because you see the same thing in the South Bend scene. You know, you you wander into uh, to a show and you see a bunch of you know folks in the band, and then there's some new band playing the next night at some other venue, and you wander in there and it's half the same people. You yeah, know, just with other <laughs> projects, <laughs> completely different genres, same yep. people. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, Katie, the keyboardist of my band, I want to say, is actively in four bands right now. I'm like, it is all I can do to be into. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My body cannot handle anymore. <laughs> so every time she's got like a band practice every day of the week, and I'm just like, I don't know how you do it, dude. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, that's uh, that's dedication right there. Yeah, right, and it's like a different instrument in pretty much every band. Nice. So it's like, especially playing drums in one band is hard enough, but yeah, you know, if I just had to roll around and play guitar across a couple of bands it might be a little easier i would think but yeah switching instruments it makes it uh makes it more of a feat i think yeah, yeah. got to be on your game for each one so yeah all right so um what what is uh next for for you uh or the band um i mean what what can we hope to see this year from jake simmons uh and or the little ghosts we're gonna put out some songs and play some shows all um right. I don't know if it'll be an album or singles or an EP or what, but uh, we're working on some stuff. So it will get put out. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're on I the promise. record now. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm holding myself accountable here. That's we right. will put out music this year. All right, all right. Well, you know, you've got uh, what eleven months, so uh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm I mean, already behind. I was already thinking like a song a month. 
That, that's how it goes. You know, um, <laughs> I, uh, the, the new year starts and I'm like, oh yeah, now this, this is when I'll get my life together. And then, um, you know, then I'm like, oh wow, we're already how many weeks into January? Well, I guess maybe next year, you know? So. Right. Right. There's always next year. Hopefully. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's gonna know. get wild this year. Who knows? It could get wild. <laughs> yeah, so um, not not to get uh, you know, too political, but you know, there is a bit of um, you know, I sense that angst in some of your some of your lyrics. So you know, where where are you drawing some of the um, you know, the the tales you're telling from? Uh, especially in the last batch of songs, I was really just frustrated. Um, all of it's been for the most part, just some level of frustration, um, in feeling that I need to understand things that I don't understand. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that like it should, for the most part, it shouldn't really be something I have to try to understand, but I mean, the level of trust I feel like you can have in American politics. One thing we can probably all agree on is uh, close to zero. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it, that's been a frustrating place to be my whole life. I remember being, you know, when I was first writing songs, 14 or 15, I believe was like still in the Bush era. And I was trying to write politically with my, you know, seventh grade social studies, you know, level of understanding of politics. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Not that it's much better now, but <laughs> I feel like I've always been kind of mad about something that didn't, you know, directly affect me. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, uh, is there a catharsis there in, uh, in, you know, writing songs about those subjects? Yeah, there always has been. Um, I'm at this point kind of burnt out on it. Yeah. You know, I'm tired of thinking about it. <laughs> I'm tired of writing about it, but you know, there are songs I wrote when I was, 14 or 15 that are just as relevant today and that's really disheartening <laughs> i know right it's yeah. um, and, and sometimes even more so where i kind of look back on some of my my thoughts and feelings uh from the past and it was almost like oh buddy you had no idea how, yeah. how much <laughs> we're gonna feel that later on you'd be wishing for those days so right 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 yeah yeah so what else, what else do you turn toward when you're uh, coming up with lyrics besides uh, the ongoings of the world and your frustrations? Uh, boy, I don't know. Sometimes I just, uh, usually it'll start with like a riff on the guitar or something like that. Rarely will I ever write lyrics first. Okay. All right. Or, you know, sometimes I'll be at work or something. You think of like a cool line or something, you write it down in your little notes app or something but i mean usually i don't ever come back to it but usually it's like i'll just be playing something and try to hum a melody and then some word that'll turn into some words and then you just kind of run with it a lot of it means absolutely nothing okay all right yeah there are um songs sometimes where i'm trying to parse out uh what you know what the meaning is and uh you know, I guess uh, that's the opportunity to apply my own meaning at that point. So right, right. Usually, I'll end up, you know, by the end of a song, I'll have a vague idea of like what I'm, what I'm thinking about. At least, yeah. You know, a lot of the stuff uh, in the last handful of years has been pretty like mental health focused. Uh, just because I feel like, I mean, maybe that's uh, to do with politics as well, but. Yeah, everybody I know, uh, their mental health has uh, declined in some way or another in the last, I don't know, uh, since 2016. I'll say. Yeah, I mean, it's just the <laughs> state of the world, right? It's hard not yeah. to be uh, to struggle. So, right. Yeah, that's been a that's probably been more of a theme in the last handful of years than uh, a lot of the political stuff had been before that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's fun. <laughs> well, and I think there's something to be said for, you know, mentioning how sometimes you don't always use those little snippets you drop in, in the notes. Um, but I think there's something to be said for kind of uh, exercising that, you know, that, that, that idea comes to mind and whether or not it turns into something, the fact that you note it down, the fact that you record it kind of 
for me, at least in writing, it sort of processes that. And even if it's not something I ever use again, it gets it out of the way for the next thing to come up. Does that kind of absolutely? I I think most of the thing, if if nothing else, you can say uh, lyrically, I'm just working through some shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you know, if I write the song and get it out, then I don't really have to think about it as much anymore. Hopefully. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, well, cool, man. I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to see, uh, what you put out and I'm hoping to get a chance to, to catch you at a couple of things, uh, this year, you know, either up by you or, you know, if you get down this way, so. Yeah, I definitely, uh, we definitely want to get down to South Bend as soon as we can. Awesome. Well, uh, if you need any help in finding some places, uh, definitely let me know. I'll see if I can get you connected to some folks, but, uh, absolutely. I will. Yeah, yeah. If we, uh, did we miss anything? Anything else you want to tell the people? I don't think so. Um, no, I could get it. Cool, man. All right. Well, keep me posted on uh, what you're putting out there as far as new releases. And, um, you know, we'll, we're always glad to toss them on a mixtape or uh, plug them on the website or that kind of a thing. So, Hell yeah. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate uh, all the attention you've given us over the years. It means a lot. Yeah, definitely. Hey, uh, I, I, it's just because I love what you do. You know, you make you make great music. So, thanks, man. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, thanks for coming on the show, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Sounds good, buddy. All right. Take care. You have been listening to Anywhere the Needle Drops, a product of Red Chuck Productions. Be sure to keep tabs on everything going on with this show and everything else Red Chuck over at redchuckproductions.com or by following us at Red Chuck Productions on social media. Special thanks to Hero Jr. for our theme music. You can check them out, listen to their songs, and see where they're going to be over at herojrmusic.com. That's H-E-R-O-J-R-M-U-S-I-C.com. Also, special thanks to Paul Clemson, our sound engineer and producer. And while you're at it, make sure you visit the websites and band camps and shows of all of our guests. If you want local music, if you want independent music or any kind of art, you've got to support them. So give musicians and artists your money. We will see you at the next episode. Until then, here's to life. <laughs>